How's it going, guys? Welcome back to Wrestle Rant, where I Graham Gius and Matthews break down every single Tuesday all the pay per views that I watch on the WWE Network. Today, we're talking In Your House 5 from December of 1995. So, as I've been talking about for the past couple weeks now, a lot of these early installments of In Your House are not good at all. Um, just largely because that 95 year, 1995 in wrestling, it just it fucking sucked. It was terrible. The matches were more often than not very good. Uh, were more often than not very good, sorry. Uh, I should clarify there. Um, the storyline sucked. The characters sucked. Not the entire year was terrible. There were some decent shows. Um, but just don't, you know, just keep that in mind. If you're checking out the old installments first, like one through however many there were, um, you know, starting at the first one, working your way, you know, toward the future, whatever. Starting from the beginning, working your way toward the end. Then you're going to notice a lot of the early ones are really not that good. So and that doesn't mean every in your house ever is, is just not good. Just the early ones. But I thought this one was the best of the bunch up to this point. I thought this was a really good show by In Your House standards in 1995. Thank God it was the last one. I'm in the middle of watching In Your House 6 at the moment, and I'll talk about the next Tuesday. But anyway, as far as In Your House 5 goes, the show kicked off with a tag team match, a Razor Ramon and Marty Jannetty taking on the 1-2-3 Kid and Psycho Sid. Um, the bad blood, the tension had been rising between 1-2-3 Kid and Razor Ramon for some time. They officially parted ways prior to this match, I believe on Raw, and uh, Razor Ramon teaming up with Marty Jannetty against 1-2-3 Kid and Psycho Sid, as I said. So the match itself was all right, really nothing special at all. It was really more over than anything else. It allowed the feud to be furthered, obviously, between Razor Ramon and 123Kid. But more over than anything else, how sad it was. The real fall from grace for Psycho Sid um, going from contending to the WWE Championship, I believe it's in your house one and two, earlier on in 1995 to ending the year in a tag team match that really meant nothing, that he had no real significant involvement in whatsoever. Um, it, that really kind of just spoke volumes for Psycho Sid. He did nothing special in this match. In, in this match at all, really. Razor Ramon and One Two Three carried it. Uh, One Two Three Kid carried it. Excuse me. Razor Ramon's team won, and that was about it. After we had Jerry Lawler in the ring, uh, reintroducing Jeff Jarrett to the WWE fans. I believe he took a break at some point in 1995. Came back to introduce himself as the initial entrant in the 1996 Royal Rumble. So he went over to commentary. Uh, the next match saw Ahmed Johnson. It was supposed to be Ahmed Johnson versus Dean Douglas, who was fresh off losing the IC Championship to uh, Razor Ramon a few months, weeks, whatever, earlier at the previous installment of In Your House. I believe it was the previous installment. Maybe it was the one before that. I don't remember. Just at some point, some other point in 1995. But anyway, um, so Dean Douglas backed out. He took on Buddy Landell instead. Buddy Landell, I believe, competed with Ric Flair Maybe in WCW or in the NWA, I think in WCW, for the title of The Real Nature Boy. Because he came out wearing the robe. He came out to Ric Flair's theme song. So, that you, if, if you're wondering why he came out like a wannabe Ric Flair, that was the whole purpose. Because he was like the second-rate nature boy at that point in time. Next to, uh, obviously, Ric Flair. But the match, complete squash. Ahmed Johnson won in less than a minute. The guy fucking sucked. But thank God this was... Uh, Best kept short and sweet. So afterwards, they teased the feud between Jeff Jarrett and Ahmed Johnson. After that, we had the uh, Arkansas Hog Pen match with Hillbilly Jim as the special guest referee between Hunter Hearst Helmsley, the featured Triple H, and Henry O. Godwin. Um, so for as bad as that sounds, I honestly did not think this was all that terrible. I mean, we saw a Hog Pen match. We, we might have only gotten two. This one and Vicky Guerrero and Chavo. Or sorry, Vicky Guerrero with Chavo. Versus uh, Santina Morella and the fucking train wreck that shit was, but and for as and the, and the whole purpose they did that was because you know the whole reason they did that was because Santina Santina whatever the fuck called Vicky a pig and all that other shit, which is why they did it. At least in this feud it made sense because um, Henry O Godwin had the whole fucking you know hog pen the the slosh or whatever the mud gimmick and that was his thing, so it kind of made sense. And they made it entertaining. I love Hillbilly Jim. I talked about him on WWE Network and Chill months ago on Legends House. He was fucking awesome. I love Hillbilly Jim. Does not get enough credit. I hope he goes in the Hall of Fame someday. I know he didn't do much, but as a character, the guy's fucking amazing. He's one of the most colorful characters of his time, in my opinion, in WWE. Uh, he was a great special guest referee for this match. This was all right. Triple H won, or Hunter Hearst, Helmsley, whatever. He won the match, kept his undefeated streak intact, and then afterwards, the babyface gave Triple H his comeuppance by throwing him in the mud anyway. So I thought this worked out really well, to be quite honest with you. Definitely exceeded expectations, to say the least. Um, after that, we had Diesel taking on Owen Hart and what was a complete squash. 
Um, it's kind of sucked to see Owen Hart be pretty much battered for four or five minutes by Diesel, but it furthered the aggression from Diesel. I mean, Diesel had not shown this aggression at, I mean, he just literally just beat the shit out of Owen Hart, um, shoved the referee into the ground, got himself disqualified. Owen Hart technically won the match by DQ, but Diesel just went off on a rampage coming off his loss of the WWE Championship the month prior at Survivor Series to Bret Hart. So I thought this was great. The match was nothing really at all. It was essentially a squash match. Um, but for Diesel's character development, he should be mad. He should be pissed. He should be frustrated from losing the WWE title. So I thought that was great. And if we had this Diesel the entire time during his time on top as WWE champion, maybe his reign would not have been as abysmal and as forgettable as it was. Or at least not known for all the bad reasons. You know, for all the wrong reasons. Uh, so anyway, we had a casket match up next between who other than the fucking Undertaker and uh, King Mabel, Mabel, whatever the fuck, and uh, Men on a Mission. This was terrible, as you could probably expect. This match sucked. Um, but I can't shit on it too much because they did keep it brief. I mean, it would have better. It, it would have been better had it not happened at all. But the fact that it did happen, it went five, six minutes, and that was it. Undertaker won to close the feud, and that was it. He was on to bigger and better things come January of 1996. So I can't really complain. They kept it short. They kept it sweet. They did not have this drag on longer than it needed to. Undertaker wins, got his vengeance, and that's really all that it needed to be. And then we got the main event, Bret Hart defending the newly won WWE Championship against the British Bulldog. I talked about the Bulldog in my previous review, how he was essentially an afterthought in the In Your House match between him and Diesel, which was all right, not great, but it was all right. Um, he won the match by DQ, and then he was completely out of the picture the following month. It was Bret Hart and Diesel at Survivor Series, which was a great match. I talked about that in my uh, Survivor Series 95 review about a year and a half ago, but... um. Yeah, so I mentioned in my last review of In Your House that Bulldog was pretty much overshadowed by the result of that match, even though he technically won. So I was glad to see him be introduced back into the fold in the main event scene for this show against Bret Hart. These two had a classic match. You don't need me to tell you that. At SummerSlam 92, which I'm glad they alluded to, too, on uh, the fact that Bulldog won that. He had a win over Bret Hart. They had that family tie, the family ties. They had the history. I thought that was amazing. I love stuff when they kind of tie it in together. And they also mentioned, too, I believe the commentators acknowledged that but, uh, British Bulldog here won the same exact tights here as he did in 92. Again, another great tie-in, so I thought that was awesome. The match itself was great. The SummerSlam match was better, um, but I mean, it's like apples to oranges. I mean, this match took place three years after the fact. Bulldog was still in his prime in 92. By this point, he was breaking down physically, um, so he was kind of towards the end of his life, unfortunately, but... No, I thought this was a really good match. I thought this was quite, quite great, especially definitely the best... It's got to be the best in your house match I've seen up to this point in um you know up to this point in the in your house chronological you know whatever chronologically whatever the fuck name is term is whatever you know what I, you know what I'm saying up to this point in the in your house events this was the best bout I have seen these two work a great main event um really that was kind of unfamiliar to the main event scene of these in your house shows typically featuring the likes of fucking Mabel and Psycho Sid and Diesel and Yokozuna and all those other fucking you know I mean not all of them are terrible just but Putting them together just was not the wisest idea. Uh, but this was a great match. Bret Hart in the end with a inside cradle, small package, whatever. Uh, retained the title and beat Bulldog. So I thought that was a great match. And overall, just a pretty good show. I mean, honestly, um, I would recommend this show to check out of all the in-your-house pay-per-views up to this point. Definitely the best. Not even a question. The main event was great. Taker and Mabel sucked, but at least it was five, six minutes. Could skip right over that very quickly. You know, Owen Hart and Diesel... A quick squash, I mean, a poor use of Owen Hart, but it did further the character development for Diesel, so I can't complain. Uh, the Hogpen match was better than I thought it would be. Exceeded expectations. Again, no complaints. Ahmed Johnson and Buddy Landell sucked, but it was a squash. 45 seconds long. Furthered the feud, or triggered the feud, rather, between Jeff Jarrett and Ahmed Johnson. Again, no complaints. And the opener was all right. Furthered that feud between Ramon and 123Kid, so... Kind of a placeholder in your house, you know, for some feuds that were building and simmering, whatever, but the bad blood that was simmering between, you know, many individuals on the show, but I thought it was a good show overall, so, again, these in-your-house shows, I don't know about the later ones, but definitely the early installments were all about two hours, less than that, hour 55, hour 49, so they're easy watches compared to the pay-per-views of today that are fucking four, five, six hours, no pre-shows and none of that shit, they actually did have pre-shows back in the day, like the free-for-all stuff, but... Not nearly as long as they are today, but at any rate, uh, check the show out on the network next week. We are talking In Your House 6, but in the meantime, and in between time, as always, guys, check me out on the socials in the description box down below, but 
in a nutshell on Twitter at WrestleRant, on the Facebook page at facebook.com backslash graham.gsm.matthews. And right here on YouTube, like the video, leave a comment with your thoughts on the show, the review, I appreciate it. Uh, subscribe to the channel, share the video, all that stuff is, as I said, amazingly appreciated. So enjoy the rest of your week, guys. Enjoy Chamber on Sunday, Elimination Chamber, that is. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch you folks down the road.